I just want to say this video is sponsored by the ArcLife clusters, which are 10x 7-man servers with no shop, no extinction, no genesis, no element and dust farm, and a monthly contest with a $500 cash prize for the winners. So if you are interested in that, you can join their Discord down in the description and play on their servers. It's an awesome server. I played on them before. You can check out my previous video on it. I did a video where I played on their servers. It was pretty fun. So if you're interested in unofficial, check it out. Keeping your items safe on official as a solo does not come natural to a lot of people. Personally, it took me thousands of hours to perfect it, and in this video, I'm going to share with you all of the knowledge I've learned over the years and how you can keep your loot safe as a solo on official. First thing I'm going to go over are the maps that you should avoid at all costs and the maps that you should be trying to stay on because they are the safest, and I'm going to explain why. Ragnarok is probably one of the best maps you can set up on as a solo, and that's because no mega tribes really build on them, and people don't come to ESP and cheat on Ragnarok as often as they do on the other maps, so you're going to be a lot safer on here rather than somewhere like the center or somewhere like um, Extinction, so this is a really good map. If you are not a fan of Ragnarok, then you can go for Crystal Isles. It's very similar. Mega Tribes don't really build up on it as much. It is very big and you have a lot of room to do things like underwater stashes and sky bases. Now, if you're not a fan of either of those, there's only one other map I can really recommend and that would be Aberration. Personally, I haven't used Aberration as a place to store my loot because I don't know the map that well, but I've heard of many success stories of people being on AB, so if you hide really well on AB, I'm sure you could find a lot of success. However, just keep in mind that Aberration is a really common map for Mega Tribes to build up on, so if you are worried about getting ESP'd, I would avoid being on Aberration. The first method of storing your loot as a solo is accessible at any level and at any point in the game, and that is through the upload. So if you are wanting to keep your stuff safe 100%, the upload is the perfect place. However, the upload is not a permanent solution to this problem. As you can see, it can be pretty dangerous to refresh your upload every day. It's also very stressful and it's not enjoyable. It is safe but it should only be used as a temporary fix so that you can keep your stuff safe for a few days while you get situated. This should definitely be every player's first step into solo. Store your stuff in the obelisk, re-upload it, and fix it every day. You can keep your valuable items and upload if you're able to get back to them the next day. But be careful when accessing the obelisk because they are very dangerous places and you can end up getting assassinated like this poor guy. I will always recommend using drops and desert drops and underwater drops rather than going to an obelisk to upload your stuff. Yes, it's convenient, but it could end up butting you in the ass. Every solo player will eventually run into the issue of they don't have enough room to store all of their stuff and upload, or you can't refresh all of your items in time, so it's really not a good solution for a long term, and I'm going to go over some really common mistakes when it comes to setting up a base and some really big misconceptions that you should try to avoid at all costs. And the first big one is setting turrets on your base. Turrets are great and all, and very important to defending a base, however, you should keep in mind that if you have any offline timer whatsoever, right, you have a life, you gotta go to sleep, you gotta do something that isn't arc for even an hour, somebody can find your base, raid it, and soak all of your turrets. It doesn't matter how many turrets you have, how good your defense is, it is basically useless if you're not there to defend it. And being one player, you have a very minimal ability to defend your base. So please do not ever put turrets on your base. It is a waste of time. If anything, you make yourself a target, you make yourself look like you have a lot of loot, and people who are like really set up are going to target your base whereas they might have ignored it before. Once you've gotten past this upload stage of being a solo player, you're going to want to set something up. And avoid putting down structures on land or into caves, because it isn't really that hidden. And it's going to get found probably within a few weeks. So if you want to last, you need to look to the skies and under the water. 
Things like skybox tames, quetzals, and underwater vaults are things that actually stick around for months and would do you a lot better than any base with turrets ever would. You might feel like you need things such as smithies, fabricators, forges, chem benches, that sort of thing, but you must understand that all of these things are luxuries that solo players don't need. Ask yourself this question before you do anything in this game. What is my goal? If you're farming for metal, what is the end game? You'll likely figure out that you're not actually doing anything productive. This is a vicious loop that many players go through when playing Ark. And especially when they're playing solo. They think that taming farm dinos, making crafting stations, and building turrets is what they need to do, but this isn't MTS. This is official, and official players aren't playing around. This is already the late game. Official has been in the late game for a long, long time. Doing all of these things isn't going to get you anywhere in the long run, and truth be told, the only things that a solo player actually needs are PvP tames, flak, grapples, the essential PvP tools, and a place to put it. Anything that you are capable of crafting is going to be so fucking dog shit in comparison to the higher tier BPs that people are already crafting and have found over the process of many many years. So don't waste your time making guns, turrets, walls, bullets, flak. All of this stuff is so pointless. You need to target players who are already making these things, people who already have them, people who have already reached the endgame, and kill them so that you can take their place in the endgame. This is the only way for a solo player to access that sort of gear, and this only way for a solo player to reach that stage in the game. You will see much more success as soon as you stop farming and start using raiding and PvP to get your gear. Things like grapples and certain things you may need to craft, such as vaults, can all be done through other people's crafting stations. Once you raid them, you can use all of their crafting stations and all of their resources to make the few things that you need. And you don't need much, you're one player, you don't need a full ready room of gear. All you need is a few sets of flags, some grapples, some whips, just a little bit of things to stockpile and then you're good. You just don't need all of this stuff. You can, you're can. you only preparing for one player, so you really don't need to do that much. So let other people farm for you and then take it for yourself. So now that I've hopefully convinced you that making crafting stations is a waste of time and that all you need is a vault or a sky quetzal or some tame in the air or something really deep in the water, I'm going to show you where are some good spots to put it. I'm not going to go over like specific locations because that's not helpful. Like Telling you where to put your shit exactly is not going to help you. Giving you an idea of where you can put yourself so you can find your own spot is a lot more helpful. Trust me. If I just say, oh yeah, there's this spot right here that's really good and I use this spot, like, it's not going to help anybody. You're not actually going to get anywhere. I'll show some examples, but please don't actually use them as like some actual show of what you should probably do so first off if we're on a map like ragnarok right so we look at so we're looking at ragnarok here if you look at the coast there is a lot of water and you might think okay well if i put my vault to the bottom yeah that's not a good idea around here is not a good place things that are shallow is a bad idea because people with clear water from the surface can render in your vault from under from like above the water and they can see it so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go out a good distance. So you're going to want, what I'd say the rule is, be out of render distance, like out of horizontal render distance of the shore. So see the stego popping in and out of render? This, as soon as you de-render that stego, this is a good spot. Like anywhere past here is okay. But that doesn't mean that vertically it's okay, right? So here is too shallow. This is too shallow. So here I can see all these sharks from the surface. It is way too shallow, right? But if I go somewhere out here, now I can't render in anything all the way down there. That's too deep. So you're like, okay, now we have somewhere that's far out enough and somewhere that's deep enough to put a vault. So let's go down there and let's find out where would be a nice spot. Holy shit, I'm blind. All right, we're going to go down. Actually, I'll probably just craft flippers because fuck, I can't see anything. Alright, so, so if we're down here, you see, oh, there's no sharks, there's nothing. This is nice, this is really nice actually. You're going to have to sacrifice a bit of convenience for safety. 
you might have to deal with the odd shark or two. Oh, this would be a really great spot right here under this ledge. People passing by on like PVE players, I don't know, some fucking dumbass just drifting through here on a squid is not going to really see something that's built down here. So you can go ahead, put a little platform, right? You're going to have to put a, a foundation, then put your vault and then pick up the foundation and pin code it and pin code your vault. Super, super easy, right? You've got a vault. It's deep. And this is a great spot. This would be an excellent spot. I would put a vault here. And as you can see, if I go to the surface, well, I'm not going to, it's too, it takes too long, but it won't render in the vault. And also, you will know where it is and you can go down, swim to it, put your tames in, get your stuff in, and you don't need crafting stations, you don't need to bother. If you are really that like annoyed that you can't have a crafting station, then just put down a fucking foundation and get a smithy on it. You can put smithies underwater. I'm not getting any place to put it actually. Here we go. So you're gonna put a foundation down and just put a smithy on it, all right? And this is where you can do your flak repairs. That's the only thing you need to, to worry about. Flak repairs, that's it. That's the only thing you really need to make in a smithy. Maybe grapples, but that's it. Don't bother with anything else. It's just a waste of time. You don't need a fabricator. You don't need C4. You have arthropleros. You can get C4 from killing people. You can craft C4 on people's bases. Like every base I raid, I can make C4 on their base. It's, it's just really easy, trust me. This is all you need. I would really avoid putting more than just a vault because the more things you put down here, the more obvious it is. The less convenient it is for you, the more safe it is. Just keep that in mind. There's like a, it's like a, if I had like a little graph, like safety goes up, the more that your inconvenience goes up. So the less convenient it is, the safer it is, typically, right? So this would be nice. Now I'm going to go on to the next thing, which is Sky Quetzals. And Sky Quetzals are the healthy balance between convenience and safety. So Sky Quetzals are excellent, especially on official. People don't really look for them. And it is a pain in the ass to look for a Sky Quetzal. Look at all of the water on this map. Just look at how much water there is. Look at how big this map is. Imagine searching the entire skybox for a Quetzal. Yeah, exactly. It's not fun, right? So let's go over where you would want to put a Sky Quetzal, right? If you had, or, or any Sky Tame, just like a, a floating owl, a floating griffin, whatever. Anything that's just floating in the air and you're going to pull your loot in it, this is where you're going to keep it, up in the air. So avoid places that are over land. And why are you avoiding places that are over land? And the reason why is because if people are PvPing, right? If, if you're PvPing, right? You're down here on a mana or something. You're, you're fighting some dude. People skybox in PvP. It happens a lot. People will skybox by accident. Maybe not here as often. It, it would be okay to have one over land here, but let's say you're out. This would be a great, actually. This is a great example. So let's say you're out here in this. Now you notice how much more elevated this is. We are way closer to the skybox here than we were over there because that is low terrain. This is high terrain. So you, you might have a hot like a sky crystal above here and this is not that high up somebody might render this in by accident a player who's afraid like maybe maybe like some guy on an owl got he, someone got he got beat up and he's flying up to skybox and he just wants to fly away at skybox up here he'll find your quetzal by accident so you want to make sure that people aren't going to find your quetzals and find your things by accident so if you keep it off of low terrain or, or keep it off of high terrain. Don't put it anywhere where people are going to be fly fighting. Like near Greenob, this is a super common spot for people to fight. So you don't want to put your quets, especially anywhere near an obelisk. That's just a bad idea. Don't ever put it anywhere where there's high terrain. So here would be another example. Don't put it here. But look at this. Low terrain. Low terrain down here. Wouldn't be as bad of a spot. But keep in mind also, people fight out in the desert sometimes. And they might skybox. But you know where people never fight? Out in the middle of the fucking ocean. No one fights out here. So a sky quetzal like right here would be perfectly fine. No one's going to find that shit. People do look. But when people look for sky quetzals, they go all the way out here. Right? When they look for sky quetzals, they go all the way out here. Nobody is going to be able to search the entire sky box over the entire water. Nobody. Not a single person is going to be able to do that. That's way too much work. That takes so much time. Um... It is way more efficient for them to search the corners because people who hide sky bases who are stupid will put them up here and that's enough. There are a lot of dumb people in this game. If you want to find a sky quetzal, look around like this. This will work. You'll find one. 
but if you actually want to keep one safe don't put it all the way at the top put it out of just put a little bit out of the distance because if somebody's flying at the top right like this they might render your zin but it's going to be out of their field of view it's going to be below them they're not going to see it so they're going to fly like this and they're not going to see your quetzal so keep it a little bit lower but way too high so out of render distance of the ground right you're going to keep it high up enough like this this would be pretty good but you're not all the way right on the skybox also you can't spawn on a quetzal if you put it too high up so just keep that in mind sky quetzals are great and the reason why is because you can keep all of your little luxuries your little dumb craft if you really want to have a crafting station then you need a sky quetzal because that is going to be the way you can do it safely still though i'm going to say this you don't need it if you looked at my squats my sky quetzal in the previous video the only things i had were fridges for keeping my like like med brews safe and my uh my my, my cloud teams from expiring and then the other thing i had was boxes i didn't even put a smithy up there i don't think but obviously you could put smithies you're restricted to very few structures on a quetzal so you have to be very very efficient put down the beds put down the, the stuff you need but don't go too crazy like if you you put down a generator one wire one outlet no more than that you got your fridges maybe one or two fridges if you need crown fridges like three that's it don't don't put too much shit if you need more storage space use smithies as storage space they have way more like you don't need physical room you just need like to be you need to be mindful of how many slots you're using up in the quest because it only has like i don't know like 50 or something not very much you'll go through it really quickly so make sure that you're being efficient with your space you can also grow plants up there so if you want things like z and y it's perfect but just note that if you plant plant z and plant y it's going to be one like it's going to be one structure count so it counts the plant itself counts as a structure and the the uh, plot counts as a structure so that's two per plant so be careful don't put too much things to have on your sky quetzal are really nice like owls have an owl up there for the fertilizer really good also you can have a tropio up there it's great you can grind up the metal you when you hit drops which you should as a solo definitely hit drops and you pick up items like metal shields and stuff like uh like Giga saddles, that is awesome. That stuff is perfect. If you have a tropio up in your sky quetzal, you never need metal because you can grind all of that shit and you're going to get like stacks and stacks of metal and you can just put that in your smithy and you're good. You don't need metal ever again. That's enough to repair all of your flak. That's enough to make all the grapples you need. You're, you're set. You don't need more. You might have to make gas every once in a while for your generator. You might have to do a little bit of maintenance here and there, but you are really free once you play like this. You don't have to worry about all this sort of stuff like getting on to make sure your base is okay, doing all this stuff like building all these walls and turrets. It's such a waste of time. Trust me, if you just build like and play like this, you're going to enjoy the game so much more and you're going to get so much better at the game. And believe me, I have over 5,000 hours purely solo on official and i can tell you that i've been like everywhere i've been at all these stages we're like oh i'm trying to build a base put turrets on it i've been in all sorts of different situations and i can tell you that this is the only thing that really works if you want to enjoy the game you want to be free you want to get rich as a solo player you want to get i don't know you want to feel like you're actually up there you want to feel like you're up there with the big dogs being able to pvp with all the good teams you have to stay hidden because if you build out with turrets, you're not going to last. So stay on a Quetzal or go underwater with a vault. Now, there is one more thing I didn't mention. So, Perlovias are a thing. I can't not address them. Perlovias and Reapers and Basilisks. So these are the three the three uh, hidden tames, right? So Parasaur hunting has been a more, much more common thing, especially on smalls. If you're on smalls, don't do this. Official... A little bit more viable if you're on official you can actually do this so when you think of a perlovia what would be actually a good spot people are gonna detect think of where a parasaur can go and where a parasaur can't go or if you're on a wyvern where are you gonna fly like so say a wyvern is gonna fly up here he's gonna look okay he's detecting right he's flying if he flies over here right he's detecting all this stuff and he's gone he's gonna fly past but let's say oh, okay i'm gonna put a perlovia let's go inside the ice cave right you put a perlovia and why i like perlovias better is because you can actually cry out them while they're, while they're buried so you can throw them out in spots where you can't bury a perlovia 
I'm not sure if you actually can bury a Perlovia in here. You might not be able to, which would be perfect because you can actually just drop one down out of cryo and hide it. Something like this. So you go in here. Obviously, you'd have to be in a situation where you can deal with these bears, but you can go in this cave, and as long as you have like the fur and stuff, you can like drop a Perlovia in here and nobody's going to fucking find it because you're so deep into this cave that no Parasaur is out of range. All Parasaurs are out of range. You're safe here. No, no Death Worms are going to come here, I believe. I'm pretty sure you have to go a lot deeper for the Death Worms. Yeah, yeah. You'd have to go down here. So if you put um put Perlovias around here, no one's going to find it. People don't really come in here that much anyway. So you're going to be really well off if you just plop down a Perlovia. You'll be fine. And obviously don't go down... Don't go down there, because that's where the ice worms are, so stay out of there. But you can go and put them down here, and you'll be very, very safe. I wouldn't permanently store my stuff here, but this is a great temporary stash that you could keep around for probably a few months, and nobody will find it. And you can honestly probably permanently store your stuff here, I'm not going to lie, but I, I, it's just, just like not convenient enough for me. Like, There's too many bears, Like, you have to have the fur, it's not nice, I don't like it. There's a lot of little holes you can put your shit in where it would be really good for uh, Perlovia, right? Like all of these little holes. No one's fucking coming in here. I bet you didn't even know this was here. I bet you didn't even know this was here, did you? You didn't know this was here, did you? All right? Put Perlovias in there. It's great. So many, so many spots that you can actually store Perlovia. Just don't, don't put them on land and just chill in a cave. Like that's not very good. It's going to get found. There's a few other spots like this, so go find your own. Find your own, especially on Aberration. Aberration's a big one. Valgaro Ab Zone. Think about that. There's one last thing I want to address, and that is rafts. And ocean platforms will group them together. So rafts are kind of a dangerous thing. So people put up rafts. It's very common for rafts to be like out here at Skyboard or at the world border, right? You clip your raft into a wall. Oh, it's safe. No one's going to raid it. Yeah, people get mad. If they see your raft clipped and they can't get the loot, they're going to get mad and they're going to break it open. That's just how it is. So when it comes to rafts, if you're going to do a raft, it has to be like temporary. Like set your raft out. And if you're going to put a raft, put it like here. This would be an excellent spot because it's not at border and it's not in render of the shore. So like it's in the middle. The chances of somebody finding it are much, much slimmer. But you want to move off of a raft as soon as possible. Don't bother with turrets on your raft. I've shown in many, many videos previously that you can just dick raft straight into fucking someone else's raft and just put a Arthur player in there and bite through the wall and just ignore all the turrets. Like turrets are so pointless on a raft, it's not even worth it's not worth it. So just keep that in mind when you're, you know, playing the game. That that's just a waste. And you want to keep your raft, obviously, away from things like this. Now, I don't personally recommend rafts in general, but I'm just saying if you're really determined to do a raft, this is where you're going to want to put it. And avoid things in your obelisks. Avoid putting them directly in your obelisks. So, like, somewhere, like, off here would be all right. And you want to avoid high population areas. So, somewhere in, like, the southwest would be a really nice spot because people aren't really going to be out there, especially bobs are not going to be out there, so they're not going to stumble across your raft. Somewhere, like, over there in the desert or out in the water past the desert is a really nice spot. And the corner over there is a nice spot. But I would avoid rafts, but if you really want to do it, then go right ahead, I guess. But move off of it ASAP. So that's pretty much all the information I really need to give you on the different methods of storing your loot. So if you are still confused or like still, you know, if you still aren't clear on everything, I've tried my best to give you all the methods there's really no alternatives if you're on aberration you can obviously do something in the ceiling with a platform that could probably stay hidden for a while also i'm going to address something with esp esp people are afraid of it but realistically let me let me tell you this people don't esp on ragnarok or crystal isles or all that shit they don't really esp there and if they do just understand that esp is restricted to render distance or just outside of render distance most of them most of them. So the majority of people ESPing, like if they're if they're lazy, right? Which which an ESPer is because they're using ESP. Obviously, they're too lazy to actually find the base, and they're cheating. So they fly over the land like this. They're the ESPing. They're seeing all the shit that's out here. They're seeing all that stuff. They're gonna see everything out here. But if your vault is like way the fuck out here, they're not gonna their ESP is not gonna detect that. They're not gonna be out here. An ESPer isn't gonna be that dedicated. Like that's the whole point of them ESPing is because they're lazy. So they're not gonna be out here. 
So that's why underwater vaults are awesome and why sky quetzals are also awesome because that is out of range of both ESPers, people who are scouting, and all that sort of stuff. You are out of range of everything at the same time, and this is the only real viable way to store your loot as a solo and official. So now I'm going to give you guys a little secret, a little secret technique that I have been using. Very, very OP, insanely fucking dumb way of storing your loot that is super strong. And you guys are going to be fucking laughing at me for this but it is so cool i'll show you guys in a sec here on aberration you can do this on any map as like actually you want to do this on like genesis valgaro somewhere where you can learn the fishing basket yeah fishing basket i said so you're gonna find a trilobite you're gonna put this fishing basket down ideally a high level trilobite and you're just gonna trap that motherfucker all you have to do is like let him sit near it and then you can just pick it up oh the best idea is just sort of like trap them between you and the fishing basket and then you can sort of block them in like this. And you might be able to trap. It can be a bit annoying sometimes to get it. But once you once you get one, you'll be set. So I'm just going to I'll catch one to show you guys. So we'll go right here. Catch this one maybe. Sort of trap him in there. Block his way so he can't get out. And we're going to trap him in a sec here. Boom. Dropped him. All right. Keep in mind, these fishing baskets are not like cryopods. If you drop this thing down, if you hold it for too long, it'll spoil. As you can see, look, five minutes on the spoiler timer. If I keep this for my inventory for five minutes, the fish is going to die. So what you're going to do is you're going to just drop them down here. Like, drop the drop the dude. Boom, we got a tamed trilobite. If you open their stats, you can see. I can open his stats. There we go. 150 weight. It's a lot of weight, actually. We put a lot of shit in there. But all we're going to do... Is we're gonna put cryopods in here so you can actually cryo these guys up and you can chuck them at the bottom of the ocean and guess what nothing aggros on these trilobites so if i drop a trilobite at the bottom of the ocean the sharks aren't gonna kill it nothing's gonna kill it i hope you guys have all enjoyed this video and you've learned how to keep your loot safe as a solo player on official and if you've enjoyed and you're liking my content Remember to like, comment, subscribe, tell your friends about the channel. We're trying to hit 10k, and we're almost there. I know we can do it. So if you enjoy, don't forget to subscribe. You can also join the Discord. It'll be in the description and in uh, pin comment as well. It's very active. We're almost at 3k members, so it's awesome. I'm very active in my own Discord as well. You can ask questions, all that sort of thing, and I will answer them myself. There's also plenty of other educated people in there who can answer your questions as well. So if you're looking to learn about the game or you just want to support me, subscribe and join the Discord. I'll catch you on the next one.